my name is Kelly Edwards. I am a host. I am a designer. I am a author of a design book that looks like a cookbook. And recently I am uh, designing a shipping container house, which is my all time favorite thing I've ever done. I had been seeing these shipping containers over and over and over again. And I mean, I was on a show called Design on a Dime years ago on HGTV, where we literally had to take like a pile of sticks and turn them into a chandelier. And we had to take like a handful of nails and turn them into a table. So I've always been really creative. And I keep seeing these shipping containers. And I kind of like jumped up from designing spaces with like nails and sticks and boards to thinking, oh my gosh, I need to do something creative on a bigger scale. So why don't I use a shipping container? So it was so crazy because I've been working with my contractor, Art Steedle. He's absolutely amazing. We've done TV shows together. Uh, we do personal projects together. And one day I was with Art and we were actually at a house and I said to him, hey, Art, have you ever thought of building something out of a shipping container, like building a house or a pop-up shop or a restaurant? And he said, oh, my God, you have to come to Long Beach. Wait till you see what's in my backyard. So I live in, in L.A., so I drove down to Long Beach, and it was like heaven. There is yards and yards of millions of shipping containers that weren't being used. So he said, we can do whatever we want with these. So we went and talked to the guy, which he actually had a relationship with the guy who ran the shipping container yard. And we said, hey, how do you feel about us taking a shipping container and turning into something? And they fell in love with the idea too. And from there, it was just born. So we said, hey, let's just start building these tiny houses. And it was so crazy because the tiny house rage is so big right now, but we actually had that idea like two years ago. So finally this year, we're like, let's build a tiny house and let's take it to television. So that's exactly what we're doing. When you're designing a tiny house from a design perspective, it's completely different than doing a regular space. I mean, if you think about it, we only have 160 square feet. So our container is only eight feet wide and 20 feet long. And the ceilings are only eight foot high. So sometimes when you see people do tiny houses, they have a higher ceiling. So they're able to like put a loft bed up there where we actually don't have that option. So we had to be really creative with how we design this thing. And I love Airstreams. I'm like completely obsessed with Airstreams and camping. But funny enough, I didn't want my container to look like an Airstream or like, you know, a, a trailer. So I said, let's make one that looks more like a tiny house and looks more like a studio. So our bottom floor actually has a bathroom, a living room and a kitchen. And then the living room actually folds out into a bed. But we built a rooftop deck and a sustainable garden upstairs too. So it's kind of this like indoor, outdoor, which is very California. Like it's crazy because the kitchen island is actually a closet, which is like totally wacky. But we had to think like, how could we make every space in here double as something else? I am completely obsessed with Allure. I love it. I've used it for so many projects. Um, I love the fact that it's so versatile. I love the fact that it's so easy to install. I love the fact that if I put it somewhere, I don't have to worry about it, especially in the shipping container. So from a very practical standpoint, if I would have put hardwood flooring, which is what I wanted, in the shipping container, when I moved it, it possibly could buckle, it could come up, and it could ruin. So instead, a better alternative to that and something that looks exactly like wood and you wouldn't even know it and it's easier to clean and it's more resilient was the Allure product. So now I know that once it's once we put that in that it's not going to buckle it's not going to come up like real wood would and for me it was an easier option and the fact that i could actually install it myself is that is like key it's crazy because i recently did a show called diy house call where i was teaching social media influencers um how to use power tools and how to do projects in their house and they all happen to be women and, you know, a lot of women get so intimidated by using power tools and um, the thought of replacing a floor is like completely scary to them. Well, I actually showed one of these social media influencers how to install a new floor in her rental. And because we weren't really using power tools, we were using an X-Acto knife. We were using a T-square. We were putting it on top of her existing floor, which wasn't even ruining her floor. That way, because she was a renter, when she left, if she wanted to pull it up, no harm, no foul, and no one even know the difference. So as far as installing it, I feel like it is so easy as long as you 
start in the right place. So you have to make sure that you start with the right piece on the end and work your way. That, that's the trick. That's what I've learned is the trick. It's almost like it's foolproof as long as you read the instructions. I mean, seriously, anyone can do it. Man, woman, like I could have like a 10-year-old kid doing it. It's that easy. That's what I, honestly, that's what I love about it. Mm -hmm.